Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson, and welcome to the Health Beat Show. Today we have a very interesting Health Beat Show. We're talking about the health of our community, some of the community health, public health aspects of our community, crime, housing, uh, being able to have a job, being able to go to school, and with us today is none other than attorney Pamela Price. Welcome to the Health Beat Show. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Thank you for having me. Well, we're so honored that you would be here. Now, you are running for district attorney yes, for sir. Alameda County. Yes, I am. And you have a background in civil rights law. I do. And uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you trained? Where you went to school? Where are you from? Right. So I went to Yale undergraduate. I got a BA in political science from Yale, and I got a law degree from UC Berkeley, Calif uh, at California, University of California at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Bolt Hall. I, Bolt Hall. Yeah. I came to California to go to Bolt Hall, uh, but I came from a background of struggle. I was both traumatized and radicalized in the moment that Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was killed on April 4th, 1968. I got very involved in the civil rights movement. I got arrested when I was 13 years old in a civil rights demonstration. I got tracked into the juvenile justice and the foster care system. And I literally made it from the streets of Cincinnati to Yale College by the grace of God. I got a great education at Yale and then UC Berkeley, Bold Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I became a lawyer to serve my community. I'm a person that knows to whom much is given, much is asked. And so you do some of the civil rights cases. Now, um, am I correct that you were involved with the young lady that was from the Bay that had uh, sexual interactions with the police? Were you involved with that case? Yes, sir. She was sexually trafficked by seven different police agencies, law enforcement agencies. And because I am a civil rights lawyer, I was called upon uh, to go to Florida to help get her out of jail after the Richmond Police Department had taken her there. So I answered that call. Wow, yeah. so you are involved with women's rights, with civil rights, and certainly these things are really, really big right now. Yeah. One of the things that you've pointed out, uh, and I've listened to you speak, you pointed out that we have so many uh, young African-American males who are being incarcerated instead of going to school. You have so many young African-Americans that are actually being handcuffed compared to Caucasians. Yes. Um, what do you think, what is the reason for that? Unfortunately, in Alameda County, we have a history of what we have defined and understand as the new Jim Crow. I mean, when we talk about the new Jim Crow nationally, based on Michelle Alexander's work, mm -hmm. there was the understanding that in part of the legacy of slavery in this country, and even after the civil rights movement and the post-civil rights movement era, that the next way to um, define and disenfranchise black people was to criminalize us. It was always the way, mm -hmm. as Michelle Alexander pointed out, that we were criminalized and that was a way of keeping us from being able to exercise our rights and to keep us from uh, being able to advance in the society. So we've heard stop and frisk. Yes, sir. And maybe certain populations are addressed in a different way. Yes, sir. Now, as the district attorney, is it part of your job to, s to see if someone is guilty or not? Is it part of your job to analyze what would be the penalty yes. for that. Yes, the district attorney is the most powerful person in the criminal justice system. The district attorney is the person that decides whether or not you even, once you're arrested, whether it was lawful or not, whether it was right or not, once you get arrested, the district attorney is the one that decides whether or not you get charged. The district attorney is the one that decides what the charges will be. The district attorney is the one that asks for bail and how much bail you should have to post to get out of jail. The district attorney is the one that decides what the plea bargain will be. In other words, what is when you're charged with a crime, 95% of all the cases in our criminal justice system 
are settled through a plea bargain. So the district attorney makes a proposal to what you should plead guilty to in order to be able to walk away from the system. And often the walk away is not really a walk away. It's you plead to this and we're gonna give you five years probation or 10 years probation or some what they call a tail. So that if you have even a minor violation, then we'll put you back in jail. And that can go on literally for decades. Okay. We're right here speaking with attorney Pamela Price. She's running for district attorney for Alameda County. And she is the one, if she were district attorney, who would be involved in a very stressful, controversial process that we're hearing as part of the one that directs, negotiates, knows the legal aspects, of coming up with the penalty. Yes. Sir. And it seems that in the data that you've shown us, there have been certain populations where maybe the penalty doesn't fit the crime, mm -hmm. or maybe there are disparities in the process. Mm -hmm. Pamela Price will be right back. Stay tuned. The Health Beat Show, sponsored by Watson Wellness Water. Your health is your wealth. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. My name is Pamela Price. I'm running for Alameda County District Attorney, and you're watching The Health Beat Show. The AAWP Medical Minute is sponsored by the African American Wellness Project. Our series on improving brain function and reducing the risk of Alzheimer's continues. I'm Dr. Mike Lenore with the AAWP Medical Minute. Three areas for optimism in controlling Alzheimer's include diet, medication, and exercise to reduce hypertension. Today we focus on diet. Claims about diets for brain health are plentiful, and recently researchers found that extra virgin olive oil helps stave off Alzheimer's, at least in mice. Those fed a diet enriched in extra virgin olive oil could learn and remember better than those not fed the diet. And while the panel did not find evidence to recommend any specific diet, those diets that included whole grains, fruits, vegetables, low-fat dairy, and keeping the salt down deserve more study. Our next segment will focus on medications available. AWP Medical Men is supported by the Dan Weinstein Family Fund. If you have a business product or service and would like to advertise on HealthBeat, contact us. We feature affordable advertising for small, growing, and established businesses. Reach an accessible audience to over 4 million viewers. Promote the health and wealth of your business and give us a shot. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, log on to HealthBeatTV.info. We are here with attorney Pamela Price. She is running for district attorney in Alameda County. You know, right now we have a lot of women who are really taking a lead in wanting to be involved in politics. We've got London Bree in San Francisco. We've got Kamala Harris. We've got Barbara Lee. And the women seem to be able to think clearly and really take a role and address what the real problems are. Now we know that um, your background, you're an attorney, you've done civil rights work, you've done work with some might call now as the Me Too movement, just yes, by sir. bringing the young lady back in a controversial situation that addresses the police. So sometimes you have to not only address an arrest and what 
the crime really was and what the penalty was, but you have to address the police too. Yes, sir. Now, how do you do that? Here you are, the district attorney. Most people think that if you're on the side that is determining the penalty, as you said, negotiating and so on, how you, they would think you're in with the police. Yes, sir. Is that, is that generally the case for the district attorney? Is that what their role is to be an extension of the police? That is how the role has been uh, implemented in the past for many, many decades. Mm -hmm. uh, the police and the district attorney do work in a collaborative relationship because the, the district attorney has to be the one to bring the charges based on the arrest report. The way, however, that the district attorneys have operated has been it, through a conflicted sit relationship because that is what has led to the lack of police accountability. So over, traditionally, the district attorney has worked as if they were hand in hand with the police. Today, we have to look at the situation separately and uh, independently with a new vision. My vision, and, and it's happening all over the country, is that the district attorney is actually a minister of justice. The police is to job is to apprehend the criminals. My job, my position, requires me to do justice to the whole community, and so I can no longer uh, have a prosecution mindset that says I want convictions at all costs, mm -hmm. that I have to take except blindly uh, without questioning whether the police have actually engaged in unconstitutional conduct, whether the arrest was proper. We know in Alameda County, and particularly in Oakland, if you live in Oakland you're four, and you're black, you're four times more likely to be stopped by the police than a white person. We have the results of the Stanford study, which mm -hmm. has looked at everything in Oakland based on body cam data. They looked at everything from demeanor, language, uh, stops, and, and some and, of the and data you And at this time, it's a to. scary process because, you know, because we have cell phones, you can see what happens to people sometimes if they get stopped. They might get shot. Right. You can see what happens through our cell phones and through the body cams. Mm -hmm. But now what we have is a phenomenon like what we had in the Fremont case where the police shot an innocent 16-year-old pregnant Latina girl. Mm -hmm. They turned their body cams off before they started firing mm -hmm. on this group of youngsters. Mm -hmm. And so the body cam data is essential. It's important. But we have to begin to recognize that the district attorney is the person that actually is the only person that can hold off officers accountable for following the law and following the rules. Now we elected a police commission yes. that is supposed to also address with these kinds of issues, how police get hired, who becomes the chief of police, the activity, accountability. I want to know, for instance, if you do come to someone, you think that there's criminal behavior, instead of shooting somebody to kill in the chest, or it, will there ever be a time when somebody says, taser him, shoot him in the foot, don't shoot to kill? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's gonna take some time because it is a matter of training, it's a matter of understanding the relationship and building public trust between the police and the community. Right now we have a situation when the police come up on a situation more often than not, they're going to shoot to kill without asking questions. That is the culture in our society. Is that society. an acceptable law? Are we supposed to? Yeah. Are we supposed to just say this is an acceptable process? Shoot to kill if you feel that there is any risk or harm to you. No, I mean you know as well as I do that we live in a gun culture. We live in a society where too many people have guns. Officers feel like they are in fear of their lives because there are people out there, there are too many people out there with guns. And mm -hmm. so it will, we will all have to work together, one, to get rid of the guns, and number two, to create the kinds of relationships with between community and police where the officers are not afraid of every black person, mm -hmm. or they're not so quick to pull the gun and just shoot people without asking 
what's going on. I mean, we're not saying we want to put officers' lives in danger at all, but mm -hmm. we are saying we have to rethink, as you're suggesting, what is this policy of shoot first and ask questions later? And mm -hmm. then, you know, after that, the person is dead, and you can't mm -hmm. make that decision over again. Now, I'm a doctor. There are mental health issues here that I think uh, in a variety of ways. Some are saying that the young people who are going into the schools and shooting, that there may be a mental health issue directed at the shooter. Others are saying that crime like black on black crime might be because of how one feels about themselves, what has happened in their family, or, and then you have the situation where you're talking about the police handcuffing uh, African Americans more. Some feel that there may be a psychological issue there. Some term not, uh, will give that psychological issue the term racism. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So we. I want to ask you. When we come back, we're here with Pamela Price. She is running for district attorney. A very important. Never had an African American district attorney in Alameda County. No. Never had a different. Uh, ha had an election for a district attorney in 50 years yes, in Alameda County? Not, not since 1966. It would be the first opportunity for you to elect your district attorney. When we come back, I want you to help me to understand how do we address the psyche, the mental aspects, so that we can heal this community, we can feel safer, and we can stay out of jail, we can go to school, we can have jobs, mm -hmm. our kids can do well. Stay tuned, we're right here with attorney Pamela Price. The Health Beat Show, sponsored by Watson Wellness Water. Your health is your wealth. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. If you want to ask us some questions or you have a topic that you'd like us to explore, go to healthbeat.tv dot info. I'll be glad to work with you in any way that we can because I always believe that if you knew better, you could do better. My name is Pamela Price and I'm running for Alameda County District Attorney because I'm a drum major for justice. For too long, prosecutors have forgotten that their mission is to protect public safety by advancing justice. Alameda County deserves an ethical, uncompromised leader who will bring justice with compassion, who will bring justice done right, who will stand for fairness, integrity, and transparency in our criminal justice system, repair the harm caused by mass incarceration, bring criminal justice reform to fruition, and stop throwing away the lives of our children. Justice done right is what we need in Alameda County, and I am that woman. If you have a business product or service and would like to advertise on HealthBeat, contact us. We feature affordable advertising for small, growing, and established businesses. Reach an accessible audience to over four million viewers. Promote the health and wealth of your business and give us a shot. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, log on to healthbtv.info. We are right here with attorney Pamela Price. She may be our next district attorney. When is the election? June 5th. Voting in. The election is now. Voting ends on June the 5th. So voting ends on June the 5th. And you, is there anyone else running for district attorney? The incumbent is seeking her third term. The incumbent is seeking her third term. And we know that currently there have been a lot of things that could have gone better in yes. Oakland, uh, re all the way from homelessness to uh, black on black crime to what's happening in the schools and these statistics that you've just shown us that certain minorities are handcuffed more frequently, stopped more frequently. We see up in Sacramento, the young man got shot in his backyard. Mm -hmm. All these kinds of things are happening. Your position, yes, should you be district attorney, mm -hmm. is you would have to not just be a partner to the police, but a partner to the people, to the community. Yes. And there's some psychological issues that we're concerned. Can you think, would the DA's office be willing to develop programs in the community 
that would help bring awareness, education, economics, housing. Is that too much to ask for or is that too far of a stretch? No, I think that the district attorney has to be in partnership with the community. When I, I say public safety requires public trust and I can only provide public safety and create a, st a strong community by being in partnership with the community. And yes, that does require recognizing that a lot of what police officers are dealing with are mental health um, situations. The calls that they have to respond to where people are having mental health crises or um, having some type of uh, crisis related to drug addiction, officers need support in trying to deal with that because that will make their job easier, it will keep the community safer, there will be less fear and uncertainty in the whole dynamic of the situation, which is what leads to injuries and in custody deaths. Mm -hmm. um, as we begin to look at uh, in custody deaths in Alameda County, which has not been done before uh, mm -hmm. on any extensive basis. The, what we've done, we've had an office that looks at situations where firearms are, um, f are used and officers are routinely cleared in those situations. We have to look at all in custody mm -hmm. deaths so that we get a bigger, better picture of what is actually happening that is resulting in the deaths of our residents. And from that, we should be able to extrapolate from that data, what are the challenges that officers are facing when they have to respond to situations? We know that there are many situations where guns are present, and that's a heightened danger, not only for the officer, but for everybody. And so gun dealing with gun violence in this community is one of the top priorities in my platform that I think we absolutely have to get to the root of. And we got to do more than just talk about it. Our kids are telling us we yeah, got to do more they, than they just talk do. about well, it. Well, we want to support right. our police. Not everyone mm -hmm. is a uh, bad or a rogue cop. Right. Uh, in many instances, they've been very helpful to myself and to many of us in the mm -hmm. community. Yes. But I think if we have sensitivity, we have retraining, mm -hmm. we've got to get out there with our kids and our young people, right. and we've got to pull something together to try to help mm -hmm. the community. W one last question. Okay, in the position of district attorney, y someone would come up to you and they would say, this person committed this crime. You look in your law book and it says, this crime says 10 years, that's it, next. Or do you have the de capability of making the decision to say, let's examine what happened, let's examine where you are in life, let's examine what your situation is, and then coming up with your own decision, using your own thought process. Yes, the district attorney, yes, definitely. The district attorneys have always had discretion to decide who gets charged, what the charges will be, and what the, again, what the plea will be, what the offer is. So if you commit a crime and the law book says 10 years, I can decide, okay, I can offer you 10 years or I can look at the circumstances and maybe I can divert you to a program that allows you to uh, pay restitution for whatever the offense is to whomever was injured and puts you back on track and puts you in a position where you do community service. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the, the smart, alternative, uh, strategic way that new prosecutors are coming forward with across the country. Do you think these statistics would change? I definitely, oh, definitely. We I wouldn't think so. have everybody in jail. We wouldn't have everybody handcuffed. We wouldn't have these types of things. Yes. Why should we vote yes. for you, for Pamela Price, for district attorney? Well, this would be a new day in our community. It would be a new day. Across the country, people are taking inventory of their district attorneys and figuring out is the, is what, is the criminal justice system working for everybody? And if it's not, what is my district attorney doing to fix that problem? In Alameda County, based on the racial disparities, harsh, extreme racial disparities, we know that it is not working for everybody. And so we have an opportunity for the first time in 50 years to actually take back our criminal justice system and make it work 
for all of us. May have a district attorney that believes in the same values that the community believes in and that is linked and tied to this community. We have a, a system right now where most of the deputy district attorneys don't even live in Alameda County. And so we need to take back our criminal justice system and make sure that it responds to the needs of our community, that it reflects the criminal, measure, criminal justice reform measures that we voted overwhelmingly for. We want to stop charging juveniles as adults. And so this is an opportunity, and I say to people, if they can do it in Alabama, we can do it in Alameda. <laughs> well, I always say that if you knew better, you could do better. Yes, and sir. these are aspects of the health of our community. Health is a state of social, psychological, physical, and economic well-being, and not simply the absence of disease. We've been talking some about mental health. We've been talking about the role that the district attorney plays, yes, some sir. of the things that you've done, some of the statistics that you have wanted to change. I believe, and it's been said by our previous Surgeon General, when he found that there were disparities in disease, if you find that you can help the group where the disparity is greatest, you'll help everyone. That's so true. That's you will exactly help right. everyone. So I that know. will help Latinos, it will help blacks, it will help Asian, Island Pacific, whites, all That's of us. Right to live together mo more safely. Yes. Sir. And we thank you for being here. Of course. Uh, attorney Pamela Price. Thank you. Hopefully for me. our new district attorney in Alameda County. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Oh. Remember to get out and vote. It's on June 4th. June 5th. June Voting 5th. Ends. Well, vote early. You though. can yeah, you can vote early yes. and elect the people that you want to represent you because you'll always hear me say that your health is your wealth, and when you have your health, you have everything. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson, we'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson, thanks for being with us on this episode of The Health Beat Show, where we try to educate you about different aspects of healthcare, about eating right, exercising right, what you can do to help yourself, how to access the healthcare system, what kind of questions to ask, what you should do for any particular disease state because I always believe that your health is your wealth, and when you have your health, you have everything. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Watson. We'll see you next time. You don't have to take my word, but I heard if you have your health, you have everything. Take my word, but I heard about the health you're gonna